Um, right. How was, how was a, a week of practice coming off a of high note like last week? Yeah, good. I mean, um, it's always good to get a full week, you know, especially so early on in the season to, you know, keep knocking out, um, you know, the things we're trying to work on, the things we're trying to progress on, the things we're trying to learn from. So now we've had, you know, one or two progressive moments, one or two learning moments, and now it's nice to put everything into, you know, into some homework and, and take steps forward. So I think this has been a really good week for us. Going back to Austin, of the last year Austin was a big, a big game for you guys. What stands out for you? about it. What is the importance of that win you guys had in that first game in Austin? Oh, listen, you know, in, in soccer, in professional sport, you're going to win and you're going to lose and you're going to tie some. So, but the way we came back, the way we showed character, the way we showed resolve, um, you know, we, we go up, we go down, uh, we fight way back up and we get the, you know, the game winner at the end. So those emotions carried us through for the next couple of weeks, right? And then we go five and over. So, but again, that's history. We don't really talk about that much. We haven't really reflected back on that. Um, it's a nice feeling to go back there because it's an emotional, you know, it was an emotional start for all of us, you know, on this journey of, you know, franchise, new team, you know, um, you know, what is the internal expectations? What do we, you know, what does the outside world perceive us to be? So, you know, but I think we've developed, we've, we've further along where, than where we were. Um, and so now it's business. Now we're just going there to get three points. Yeah. Coach, expectations are kind of reversed from what they were last season. So the, the result last year aside, um, how do you see expectations for Austin versus your team? And how do you manage Austin being the team that seems to be fighting against those expectations? We're not worried about the opponent. You know, we, we're very focused on ourselves and, and how we're progressing ourselves along as a group, as individuals, as a team, collectively. Um, so, you know, we don't care what the outside expectations are. We care about our internal expectations. And as long as we've been true to that, you know, we, we're holding ourselves to those standards and those, uh, you know, being accountable on those demands. Um, or, or on that front. Um, and I, that's what I would say for that. You know, um, Austin's a good team. They have some difference makers, um, you know, but again, we're not too worried about, you know, what's in their ranks and, and how they progress into plan and prepare for us. Uh, we're just trying to bring um, consistent performances with us. And, and that's our challenge. Overall, I think it was viewed as a very positive game against New York City FC, uh, technically and with the result. But what are some areas that you saw from that game that you look to improve upon going into Austin? Yeah, I think within our, you know, who we like, there's a look and a feel to the game and, and that looked and felt right. Um, and, uh, you know, across the board, you know, when you, you give up as little as that, when you're as dominating as that in many fronts, you know, uh, within our game model. Um, yeah. Yes. You feel good about it. Um, but again, it's, it's three points on the board. Um, it's our second game. It's early in the season. You know, there's, we've had a rough schedule. We've picked up a couple of injuries. So we're trying to manage all of that around the surface and still trying to be competitive. We're still trying to get the games looking and feeling like the way we want them to look and feel like. And, um, you know, I thought that was a big turnaround and, and a really good positive moment for our group going forward. Coach, uh, do you know who Danny Higginbotham is? I do. The, okay. He compared City to his old team, Stoke City, the team that everybody hates to play. Yeah, and he said I heard that. that. Okay. You I listened hear. to the broadcast as okay. well. Yeah. All right. So he, he, he made some comments that were, in my mind, extremely complimentary. He said the team's relentless. It's organized chaos in that on your team, everybody knows their role. Uh, every player plays for the collective and you have good players but great characters hmm. yeah listen i mean i think that is very complimentary and very flattering um and and we're just trying to develop you know not just players we're trying to develop people here along their journeys right um and i've always said you know the people in this building um far outweigh the talent you know, and, and that's not a knock on the talent because I feel we have very talented players, right? But the people aspect is always first for us. The character aspect is always first for us. And the, the, the players that we have here believe, me, believe in this team identity, the team culture. And then there's a game model that looks and feels like us, you know, and what does that look and feel like? Well, the city of St. Louis, the people of St. Louis, you know, they're grinders, they're workers. Um, and that's what we do. Um, that's what we want to do. And people who come into this building, places where we go and play, we always seem to bring out, bring out the best versions of those teams because they can't take a breath. They can't take a pause, right? So we like to control that chaos and make it predictable 
um, with all these, you know, with our game model philosophy, you know, tactics, all these things come into play that makes it look like unbearable for the opponent. And, you know, if we suffocate the opponent in, in many different areas, you know, we'll be competitive and we'll win games. Um, but right now we're trying to do both. Sorry. Sorry, thinking about the two games, um, the team play, played against, <clears throat> against Austin last year, and uh, you've seen what Austin has done so far this year. Have you seen any different on this Austin 2024? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, we, we feel that, you know, there's a lot of moments where they've put an emphasis on, on certain phases of play that they're trying to, you know, have a collective, uh, identity, a, a collective approach to their defending and, um, you know, trying to be resilient in that department. Um, so, you know, yeah, how can we now break down a team that might sit down a little deeper, you know, and, and I think we've taken steps forward this season, you know, and, and that's what we've been working on. So, yeah, I mean, uh, there's always last season, this season, new things that they are working on, new things we've been working on. And then you play against each other and everything you plan for, it's been against other opponents. It's been other personnel. So in the first five, 10, 15 minutes, you know, oftentimes the tactical approach, then it now becomes me against you. You know, it becomes the one V ones. It becomes the two versus ones. It becomes now the identity pushing through your principles pushing through, right? So you can plan and prepare as much, but how does it look on game day? You know, um, and we don't want to reflect too much on last season uh, because each team has a new dynamic. Each team has new players. Each team has, uh, you know, maybe slightly a new identity a new belief system. So, you know, we just focus on us and what we what makes us strong and, and how we can, you know, um, yeah, be uh, advantageous over the opponent. How is uh, Kyle Heaver progressing along? Yeah, good question. Uh, Carl's progressing along. Um, we're evaluating him if he's travel ready or not. Um, and these discussions will happen um, in the next 24 hours. Coach, you we've talked about the difficult schedule to start the year. You know, again, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. With this week you've had between for the kind of the first time this season, have, do you feel like the guys mentally, physically have started to maybe settle into the beginning of the season here? Yeah, listen, I mean, there's no hiding the accumulative uh, fatigue, right? So that what happens in the very first part of preseason, we like games. You know, we want to have the schedule of Wednesday, Saturday, or Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday. We like that schedule, um, you know if you're up and ready and in the season, right? So there's a difference between having that schedule in the middle of the season uh, or in the very beginning of the season, right? So when you're still not, you know, at optimal fitness levels um, and you'll see across the board, across the league teams, you know, who play in these tournaments, they're often missing nine, 10 players because it just, it's compounded overload and compounded fatigue in a short space of time. So, you know, everyone has to deal with these struggles, but yeah, it's good to have a week where we can iron out and wrinkle out a few things and take steps forward, um, you know, really review, reflect and, and train, you know, and, and uh, iron out some of those things on the training ground on a practical sense. So, yeah, I think it's, it's all good. You know, we, we, we've used this week wisely. Let's put it that way. Just to run through the, uh, the other injured guys. Uh, do you think you could have Rasmus this week or more likely next week? Yeah, I think we could. Um, I think he's being cleared and, and he's feeling good. He brings tons of energy. So um, we're looking to travel with him. And presumably Jabulo is not available this week? Um, probably not. Still evaluating and, um, you know, hopefully ramping him up um, if he comes through this week's uh, program from Monday. And then what's, what's Josh's situation with the hamstring? Is that... How long term might that be? Yeah, next week he should be. Yeah, this week he's you know doing just about as much as he can on his own, and then he should be integrated next week slowly into training. The hamstring kind of surprised. I was expecting it to be at least it's much better than a concussion, which I would have thought after the way he got, you know, kept getting hit in the head. In that game. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, um, those are always very serious things. You know, knocks to the heads, and and that precautionary and and uh, very important to make sure that that's cleared um once that was cleared then obviously there's a few other things that over you know compounded over time you know what is the end result of that and you know everything happens for a reason um so you know maybe the knock to the head you know saved a, a, a very serious injury in his hamstring so thank you <laughs> you doing dials and knobs or whatever? How important was last last week's last week's win on getting you guys on the right track and, and feeling good? 
Yeah, I think it was uh, definitely a great win, but it's not only the win. It's 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 the way we won. It's the way we played. It's the way um, we approached the game and the things. Uh, I think we, we took the right conclusions uh, out of the game uh, in Houston. And um, I think you saw all of that, what we analyzed. You saw that uh, on the pitch versus New York City. So, um, yeah, I think it was overall a very good game. And what... What do you remember most from Austin a year ago in the first game down there? A lot of a lot of positive things. Uh, my first MLS game. Um, yeah, I don't know. A great atmosphere in the stadium. Uh, immediately had our first first win. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of good memories. Hey, did you played uh, ninety minutes on Saturday, and now. This was like a normal week, no midweek game. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel pretty good. I think, um, yeah, it was good for, for me to have uh, a couple more games in the beginning so that I could get like more minutes. Um, but now it's also good for me after 90 minutes to have like a little bit more time uh, to recover again and to uh, get uh, back at it on Saturday. So uh, I feel I feel pretty good. Edu, this game against New York City, it was pretty clinical as far as your ability to progress the ball. You led the team in passing, touches, recoveries. What did you see on the field that enabled you to be so effective? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to to be better every single game. I'm trying to be as criti critical as I can with myself and uh, obviously the coaches anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to to analyze my game every single time and Right after the game, when the game is finished, I go home and uh, re-watch the game. Um, that's always how I do it. And I try to like um, lay the emphasis a little bit more on uh, my defensive performance because I know um, I love to have the ball. Uh, I, don't, I don't have to think about that, but uh, defensively is always something that I have to push myself. And um, yeah, I just enjoyed uh, playing 90 minutes again, and um, I'm I'm very happy that uh, that I can play again. What are your thoughts on the partnership with Chris Dirk, and how did you feel being out there with him for so long? And did it seem like it wasn't skipping a beat between Jabulu Blom and him, or does he bring his own uniqueness to the field? Yeah, I mean, both of them are like uh, more like orientated defensively which is good for me that that gives me a little bit more freedom and that's what uh chris told me also before the game that he's trying to give me as much freedom uh, as he can um and that's i don't know it, it was really good to play next to him because also um the way he was pushing me also like we were pushing each other on the field uh to go back and forth and to to keep going all 90 minutes and and I enjoyed a, a lot playing next to him, and I think uh, I think we we um, played a good game together. What did Celio bring to the match the other night? Yeah, obviously one goal and assist, uh, which won the game for us. Uh, I think that's already uh, pretty good. But um, yeah, I, I think like Celio is doing a lot of great things on the pitch. He's very very good in one v one. He's very. Uh, good in dribbling and uh, taking opponents, uh, dragging more opponents on him. Um, yeah, but I think it's it's very good for him that now he could also reward himself with, with a goal, with an assist. Um, and I think uh, that was also very important for him to have like an end result as well. Uh, so so I'm happy for him. Um, he he deserves it because like he he was playing a great preseason. He's always giving everything. He's always positive and. Um, yeah, so I think uh, not only me, the whole team is very happy for him that the team made such a great game. What, what do you think got into the team between the Tuesday Houston game and the Saturday New York City game? What made, what accounted for the big jump in the play? Yeah, as I said, I think we took the right, right conclusions out of the game in Houston. Um, the way we pressed uh, wasn't good. So we had a lot of meetings, uh, meetings with the strikers, meetings with the defensive players, and we were talking everything through. Uh, we, we are holding each other accountable. So everybody um, was like also very open and very honest um, to talk everything through what everybody needs to do better. And um, yeah, at one hand, it was depressing because like in the Houston game, uh, 
we, we weren't ourselves and we wanted to to show our our real face against new york city again and um yeah there were many many other things uh that that we were analyzing and uh, as i said we took the right conclusions but um yeah that's also like a lot of talking a lot of analyzing but then in the end of the day you have to bring it on a pitch and in the end of the day that that's that's what we did you know you had so little practice time in between then with the way the schedule was that it's like to be able to do that by looking at video and meetings seem you know rather than working it out on the field in practice seems like a, a good a good skill to have a good ability for this team to have yeah yeah for sure and i i think that says a lot about the the character of the team um the thing is sometimes uh Sometimes you think like the right conclusion is now you think about all this kind of stuff and you think about every corner, like what do we need to do better? But I think sometimes, and that's what we had in this game, sometimes it's about like remembering the easy things, like remembering simple things that we always do, like uh, pressing together collectively, um, the intensity of how we are pressing, like easy things that, that, that got us um, like huge results and a great season last year. And um, that's in the end of the day what we did, like reminding ourselves of who we are and how we want to play. And I think you saw that right away when we came out of the, the locker room, the in intensity on the pitch was just like a way different intensity and approach of, of the game before. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.